Okay, join everyone quickly and uh, be ready with the pen and paper and whatever the concept from the guest, you have to write down all that thing, okay? And uh, at the end of the session, we are going to share one link on a in a chat box. So everyone should be give the reply or give the feedback related to that link okay you have to take a screenshot you have to upload that screenshot in a that link okay my screen uh, my screen is visible to all yes sir yes. thank you within a two minutes the guest will uh, join wait for a moment so still some students are remaining to join uh put the message on your group so maximum student can join the class just a minute guest are waiting i think Uh, Madam Sir, join Dalit. Sir, just a minute. Huh? The Madam will join. Patel, ma'am? Yes, sir. Uh, sir is there. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, Virendra, sir, is it audible to you? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Virendra, sir, are you there? Sir, can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. sir. Can you please turn on your camera? Sir? Yes, sir. Just a minute. I need to interface it. Okay, sir. No issue. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. I hope I'm audible. Okay. Uh, so today we have expert session on signals and system and for that we have with us Dr. Virendra Dakuge who is a Dean R&D and Associate Professor in Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering at Guru Nanak Dev Engineering College, Bidar, Karnataka. Okay. Sir has completed his PhD in array signal processing from BTU Bergam and he has five patents under his name, more than 25 paper publications as well as seven book chapter publication and more than 10 conference paper publications. He has received research funding for various projects related to smart antennas and he has received awards like best researcher. He is a senior IEEE member, uh, then Indian National Science Academy visiting scientist to IIT Delhi. 
so very experienced person is with us for today's uh, session so i request uh, dr virendra dakulgi sir to please uh, continue with his session thank you sir for uh, sparing your valuable time with us i hope uh, our students will uh, get benefited with this uh, your experience and they will get motivated for the studies in signals and system also okay thank you sir go to you sir thank you madam sir can you hear me no? yes sir you are you are audible i'm going to start the video uh it will uh it will describe us so shall i start my presentation sir sir if uh, there uh, i think one uh, another uh, mobile is there i think you are connected on both uh, two devices i think so that's why the echo is generated my laptop echo is Sir, can you hear me? Hello. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, you are audible. Sir, can I start the presentation? Ah, yes, sir. You can. So, good afternoon, all. Head of the department, the coordinator, and the dean of student members. So. This presentation is made only from the student point of view because it is a, just like a tutorial class, not from the expert point of view. So, as for the uh, coordinator's instructions, I have gone through the syllabus, and as for the syllabus only, uh, I have I'm sharing my notes uh, so that I can try my level best to present you uh, a sampling and a signal processing. Now, I wish to share the PPT. Sir, uh, please allow me to share this. Uh, sir, you have you are a uh, co-host. No, so you... the participant. Okay, okay. So you are uh, joined from another device. Okay, so just me, sir. I make you co-host. Okay, sir. You can now. You can share it. I think you can see the screen. Okay? Please acknowledge. Can you see the screen? So can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, but uh, your uh, voice is little bit low, sir. Ah, that is why I have just turned on my another mobile. Yeah? Because through system it is taking very long. Okay, uh, sir, you can join on uh, two devices, but one uh, make one speaker is off. Okay, one device speaker is off, then you can. Okay. Now, sir. Yes, sir. No, it is easy. So dear students, let us start the presentation. So basically, signal processing, and I wish to, I, I wish to, it, it should be interactive class. So I will try my level best to explain the sampling and the, what is the sampling procedure for the signal point of view and sampling theorem and a few numerical fun facts. So I, I wish that you should interact and you should discuss with me at the same time in this class. So my camera will be off now. Just a minute, sir. Uh... We have to take one uh, screenshot. Wait, Andrew, sir, just a minute. Sir, can you please turn on the camera? Just I want to take a screenshot. Okay, just a minute, sir. I will take a screenshot of this. Okay, sir, you can. So let's start signal processing. 
So dear students, I want to ask you this. What is a signal and what is a signal processing? Can anyone? See, I observed in the previous class, I don't know whether you were back or, uh, or other back, I don't know, but in the previous class also nobody interacted. So if you interact now, we'll get interest so that we can discuss more apart from this content which is uh, there in the PPT. No problem. So all of you know what is the signal and what is signal processing. Basically, signal is just any function which is plotted over a time, period of time, T. T will be discrete and T will be continuous. If time is discrete, the signal is called as a discrete time signal. And if the T is uh, continuous, Hello, sir, I'm audible. You are audible, sir. You are audible. Okay, okay. So, but your voice is not uh, getting here. So, that's why I make you. Okay. You are audible. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Shall I continue, sir? Okay, sir, you can continue. Oh. Yeah, thank you. So basically, the signal which is shown is a continuous time domain signal, which is perfect sinusoidal signal, which is not available directly. So for example, when I'm speaking here, and you are hearing in the conductor, there is almost uh, many hundreds of kilometers apart. So how uh, in real time the signals are reaching from this end to that end, that is a uh, very astonishing Thing that and a very surprising aspect that you should know from the signal processing and communication point of view. So basically, when I'm speaking to the speed signal, that is analog signal, it is it is a it is completely a non-linear signal. Means it has many uh, ups and downs in, in terms of the amplitude. It will not have a smooth curve which is shown in the graph uh, like this one which is plotted. So this type of signal is basically passed to the transducer, and what the transducer is doing, the transducer converts such type of a non-linear signal, it is continuously varying into a perfect sinusoidal signal. So what we, you can see on the graph is a perfect sinusoidal signal. This perfect sinusoidal signal is there. Now, uh, we need a transmission of this signal. Now, the signal in the signal processing in your class, the many basic aspects of signal processing may be carried out, like what is signal, what are the signal classification, what is even signal, what is odd signal, what is the period of signal, what is the energy of signal. There are plenty of things. So since this class is an expert talk, so I'm taking this signal processing concept from the application point of view. So in the application of point of view, the first thing is how exactly sampling happens and how, what are the sampling theorems 
and what are the few numericals and the practical aspects and the challenges which are related to the sampling problem. So here, when I told that any transducer or any speaker, which, for example, right now the device is taking my voice and my voice, which is the physical in nature, that is not an electrical signal. So this physical signal, which is a speech signal, needs to be converted into electrical signal. Now, how this speed signal will be converted into an electrical signal? There is a transducer. Always remember, the transducer is used at the speaker as well as the microphone. So in the microphone also, let us consider through my mobile microphone, a signal is reaching there, means it has a transducer. And this transducer converts this uh, continuously varying physical signal or a speed signal which is coming from my end into a uh, perfect sinusoidal signal that is called electrical signal. Now, this electrical signal, when it enters into a transmitter, it is not suitable for the transmission. Why it is not suitable for the transmission? Because you all know that you are a second year student in the first year of second year, you might study that. It requires a power to this point. Because the speech signal is always, remember, it is, comes under the audible range. For a particularly a telephonic signal, for example, my voice, when it is considered, it is a three hertz to three kilohertz, three ki kilohertz to 3.5 kilohertz. So this uh, kilohertz of signal is, uh, or a signal, it is not possible to transmit or a dist or a, from this point to any other point. It will reach hardly 100 meters or 200 meters, not more than that. So what is required then, modulation is required. So through the modulation, the signal is transmitted from transmitter to that. So this part is different. Now I mean that before that, what is in the digital signal processing? The digital signal processing need to do the sampling of a signal. Why sampling of a signal? Because uh, analog signal has to be converted to digital. Try to understand uh, because since you're not interacting, there is a difference between a digital signal and a discrete signal. So what you have seen on the screen, there is a continuous waveform in between the samples are shown. These samples are not digital, they are discrete. So what we have made initially, the continuous was, signal that is not is shown <laughs> is made discrete. A perfected chopping has happened, just like in pitch and how onion can be chopped in equal slices. Now the similar Hello, sir. Sir, only first screen is visible, first slide is visible. Second slide is not visible, sir. No, sir, no, sir. Only first slide. No, no I have changed here. I, I'm not getting why it is not changing, sir. I have changed uh, here. Sir, uh, just a minute. Uh, stop the presentation and share, uh, re, uh, reshare the screen again. So you can. Okay. Stop your sharing screen and then uh, reshare it again. Yes, sir. I think now it is changing. Perfect. Now, yes, sir, it is visible now. Hmm? So these students, sir, students are not interacting. Uh, just I, I have to put the message. Hello, guys, SYB and SYA, please interact. Okay, the session should be interactive. Okay, so if you are asking, if you have any doubt, you can uh, ask the question or you, you should interact with them. Okay, you all are aware related to signal line system. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here uh, on, on your screen, if it is uh, small, you can zoom it and see the first figure. In the first figure, you can see that there are, are samples are there. So continuous signal is there. It is varying. We have taken a frequency domain signal because digital signal processor, the input should be in the frequency domain, not in the time domain because harmonics can be analyzed properly. So this frequency domain signal, which is represented in equation number one, you see, you can see in equation number one at the top, X omega, omega, or F, or anything. So capital X. So it is varying from minus infinity to, when is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. 
x of n e raised to minus j omega n. I will come to this equation because this equation is discrete in nature because we are having using we have used the summation. Now, uh, before writing this equation, I would like to give certain inputs to you due to that. This continuous signal, when it is made discrete by using a, a sampler, there is the practical samplers are available, just like switch on, switch off devices, very simple circuits. They, as per the timings, they, they will completely in equal sizes that will divide and that will make a sam, uh, discrete signal from the continuous signal. So when in, the, in this graph, where you, when you can see in this graph, uh, where uh, uh, continuous signal is made into samples, we can analyze over a period of zero to two pi. Suppose if we consider a one cycle zero to two pi, there are many samples are appearing. So to get a single sample, for example, if you want to uh, get the value for the first sample, so there is a formula called two pi by n. So first beginning, n, what capital N indicates here? The capital N indicates the number of uh, samples. For example, if you want the first sample means zero at the zero position, if we rotate it, means uh, you can take at the zero, uh, two pi by zero like that. For example, eight samples are there, two pi by eight, like you can you can get uh, the number of samples into, yeah, into K is there. So here we can see the uh, the formula which is written is W is equal to two pi by N into K. So K is varying, uh, remember K is varying from zero, one, two, three, four, up to N minus one. And n is the number of samples. For example, you have seen eight point sample, eight point uh, uh, computation, four point computation, 16 point computation. At the time, n become eight, 16, et cetera. And k is a uh, in, in, in integer value that is varying from zero, one, two, three, et cetera. So now we can write a Fourier four transform equation, or we can see that uh, the Fourier transform equation is represented in equation number one where x of omega, omega is uh, uh, representing uh, the continuous signal. And in the RHS side, summation to represent the discrete nature of the signal, n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, that is a theoretical one. And x of n here, you can see there is no x of t, x of n, a discrete signal, it is to minus j omega into n. So now what is omega? Omega is an angular frequency, which is varying from zero to two pi, and it's, uh, we can see that here omega we have taken two pi by n into k, where k is varying from zero, one, two, three, etc. And n is n is equal to eight, n is equal to four, n is equal to six. For example, if you want to take n is equal to four, means four point sample, then k will be zero, one, two, three. Upon substituting in the two pi by n, two pi by uh, four, k is equal to zero, we'll get the first sample. Two pi by four into k is equal to one, then the second sample. And two pi by four into two, third sample, and two pi by four into three, we will get the fourth sample. Fourth sample. Like that, we will get n is equal to four. If you want the samples for n is equal to eight, you need to vary k from zero to seven. If you want n is equal to sixteen, you should vary from k from k from zero to uh, so on. So you will get the sample. Now let us substitute the value of uh, k here. See here in this equation, the, uh, the very first equation. So here, uh, I will use a pointer. So here, I'm using the pointer. So now this is the equation. Now this in this equation, what is done? Yeah, I'll go back to the first equation. I'm sorry, my slides are not moving. I'm sorry, Anmol sir, my slides are not moving. Okay, sir, okay. So, 
there is a problem today you think that is a problem Slides are not changing. Uh, sir, can you use Google Meet? I think this on Zoom. Sir, uh, okay, on my laptop it is moving, but on yes. the screen it is not moving. On mobile it is not moving. Okay, sir. Uh, because of that uh, network, so you 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 can uh, share with the uh, direct uh, your PDF. So you can use that PDF also, sir. Here. Open that PDF in your uh, laptop directly. If you are having a PDF, then. Yes. Sir. Okay, sir. Now it is changed. Yes, sir. Now it is it's okay. Okay, sir. You can continue now. Yes. So here in this first equation, we can see in the LHS side there is a W and the value of W has to be taken 2 pi by n into k. So that is I'm substituting in the second page. And similarly on the RHS we are having W. In place of this W, we need to substitute 2 pi by n into k. Now this we want, we'll, understood, we'll understand, but the important thing is here the summation, which is shown n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity is a theoretical one. So now practically it has to change. So when I'm using this uh, pointer, no? the pointer is making problem. Uh, after that, it is not moving again. Just a minute, sir. When you are using pointer at that time, uh, when you mark that, you stop that uh, pointer uh, scaring. Okay, then you can uh, move like this. Okay, uh, when you select the pointer at that time, after the moving, you you should de deselect that. Okay, you can. Okay. Sir, क्या करो जो pointer आप use कर रहे हैं कि नहीं? जब जब खत्म होता है point या आपका pointer indication करना उसको स्टॉप करो प्रेजेंटेशन प्रेजेंटेशन को नहीं वो पॉइंटर को स्टॉप करो यस यस कम इन हां राइट राइट एंड देन यू स्टार्ट दैट सो हियर वी हैव टू टेक वी हैव टू डिवाइड द होल इक्वेशन इनटू प्रैक्टिकल वन सो यू कैन सी हियर फ्रॉम माइनस इनफिनिटी ऑनवर्ड्स वी हैव टेकन एंड टुवर्ड्स द फर्स्ट प्लस इनफिनिटी ऑनवर्ड्स वी हैव टेकन सो व्हाट आई हैव मेड इन दिस डेरिवेशन वी हैव स्प्लिट इट इनटू थ्री टर्म थ्री टर्म्स द फर्स्ट टर्म डॉट 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 that is coming from minus infinity term stop and then three terms we have made so the first range is n is varying from minus n to minus 1 then second range is coming from n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 then third one is n is equal to positive the complete positive that is n is n is equal to capital n to 2n minus 1 so in every equation uh, in all the three terms we have taken minus j omega n omega values 2 pi by n into k so this is third equation. So now the, we can see the above equation can also be written in compact form. So we have to use our uh, uh, mathematics help so that the third equation can be written in a compact form. So how this third equation is written? The LHS is the same, that is x of 2 pi by n into k. Now in the RHS side, 
I'm taking this uh, small l is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. Under that, the summation n is equal to uh, small l into n, l into n plus n minus one into x of n e raised to minus g two pi by k into n. So here, to explain the equation number four, I need to explain again a mathematics in detail. So right now, because a lot of theory content has to be covered, uh, later in other time you can call me for the discussion of this time, this equation. So this equation is nothing but the alternative equation of equation number three. Now what we are doing in the further simplification process, because we want the signal range should be from n is equal to zero to n minus one. This is called the uh, present and the future one. n is equal to zero to n minus one, not the past signal. So because of, to get to this one, we have to substitute small n by n minus l into capital N. So in equation number four, so in equation number four, after writing this small n by small n minus l n, so we will get here that wherever n small n is there, in place of small n only, we are changing this one. So we will get the next equation, which is not labeled here. It's a first pi equation is below, but it is the next equation. So here, small x of n here, small x of n is written as x of n minus l into n. So why? Because writing this one will take the shifting one. So later after sampling in the first, I have seen in your syllabus, the properties of, are not there. So in the future, when you will study the signal processing to digital signal processing, where you will study DFT, or Fourier DFTs, discrete Fourier transform, inverse discrete Fourier transform, transforms, et cetera, they will come to know what is the importance of the, the time shifting, frequency shifting, et cetera. So now, small n will become small n minus l into n, erased to minus j two pi by n into k. Again, here are small n is replaced by n minus l into n. So now this equation, from this equation in the bracket, I have a simplified one. So after simplification, which is uh, what we are doing is here, again, we are using a formula of erased to minus j theta. So we know it is in the bracket, it is written erased to j two pi k into l. Now I'll give you an example of e raised to minus e raised to plus j theta. So how we are writing e raised to plus j theta, cos theta plus j cos sine theta. So suppose here in this one, we have suppose theta is two pi k into L, we can write cos two pi k L plus j sine two pi k L. So where, what is k and what is L? Both the k and L are varying from zero to n minus one. K is varying from zero, one, two, three, and minus one. And his L is also varying from zero, one, two, three, and minus one. Now, when you're substituting this one, for example, when you are taking uh, the value of k is equal to one and l is equal to one, suppose the value of k and l are one, one, cos two pi plus k sine two pi, so it is always one. So equation number five, the further simplification of equation number five, let's just say in the RHS summation, small n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, but summation n is equal to zero to n minus one, we have taken, then x, this term is same, x of a small n minus l into n, e raised to minus j two pi by n into k. So next equation, from that equation here, what we can write is equation six and later equation number seven. So try to understand from equation six and seven, we are drawing a concept where aliasing will come to know. And aliasing one of the important concepts in the signal processing. So in the LHS side, two pi is x of two pi by k, uh, two pi by n into k is the same. In the LHS, the first term is taken as it is only the arrangement. As compared to the previous equation, what we have done here is an arrangement where the summations are interchanged because we are going to write an important equation called XP of n. To write the XP of n, where p stands for periodic signal. So we have to make a little arrangement. So uh, summation n is equal to zero to n minus one is taken completely outside the bracket uh, that is taken at the beginning. After that, the second summation, which is represented here, L is minus infinity to plus infinity, X of N minus L N is as it is, E raised to minus J two pi by N into K into N same. Here, K is varying from zero to N minus one integer, and small n is also varying from zero to N minus one integer. Now, when you see this complete term, which I'm highlighting from summation to the last term, E raised to minus J two pi by N into K, represent, xp of n. This is another signal which is represented. So another signal is xp of n. So here uh, in the seventh equation, uh, LHS is the same. In the RHS, the first summation is written as it is, that is summation n is equal to zero to n minus one. 
the remaining term which is there in the sixth equation, this equation is represented by xp of n here. This term, only this term, not up to the e, up only this one. The summation l is equal to minus infinity plus infinity x of n minus l into n is taken as xp of n. It means it's a periodic signal. And later, the same, that what is called the exponential term, e raised to minus j to pi by n into k n. So this equation, this term only gives us the sinusoidal power to the equation is in equation number seven. Now here, xp of n is uh, taken from the equation number six is summation l is equal to minus n to the plus n with the x of n minus l into n. Now let us understand before if we are in the construction process only, we have not gone to the reconstruction part because we are still in, 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 in making the signal from continuous to for fifth bit and we are not obtained this bit for a transform of that one. So here, uh, before that, we'll come to know one concept called aliasing. Now, what is aliasing? Aliasing is nothing but the normal language. It is overlapping of the signal. Since it is a discrete signal, aliasing here means overlapping of the samples. You know why overlapping happens and how, how we can avoid the overlap. So here, in this xp of n is a periodic representation of x of n. What is represented? I am taking x of, let us consider, a discrete signal. Please remember we are dealing with a discrete signal here. Since uh, we can take uh, or we have taken n is equal to n is equal to eight, so eight samples will appear. So suppose let us consider this is a periodic signal. Xp of n is a periodic signal of uh, eight samples. So it is a one one uh, signal x one of n, the second one x two of n, the third one x three of n, etc. 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 So X of n is a periodic signal, means it periodically it appears in similar form of that signal. So eight samples are there, means it's periodically it is appearing like this. So now let us consider this X of n as an arbitrary non-periodic signal, which is which has samples. Let, let us consider L is equal to four, let us consider. So in place of L is equal, let us consider now L is equal to four. Now here, capital N is equal to A. Now let us take N, L is equal to four. So how we can write L is equal to four? I have represented, it is an example you can write in your own way. So L is equal to four, it's taken as four, three, two, one, it is like that. So now when, what is a condition? When condition, how to avoid a condition? The condition is that always remember capital N, which represents the number of samples of a discrete signal should be always greater than the number of the length of the sequence, which is there. So for example, uh, n is equal to six, so then l is equal to uh, l, l is equal to n is equal to six, then l is equal to six. If, if you are taken, uh, it is not uh, correct. It is small mistake is there. So, for example, here, how many samples are there? One, two, three, four, four. So, l is equal to four. So, here it is wrongly represented. Capital L should be four, and capital N should be six. So, capital N is equal to six, and capital L is equal to four means. Here, four samples are occupied. After that, two samples break, then the signals will appear. Suppose n is equal to six, l is equal to four, means n is greater than l, no aliasing. Let us consider n is a reverse the condition. Reverse the condition means, suppose take n is equal to four and l is equal to six. Here, not it is represented properly. So if the, suppose n is equal to uh, four and l is equal to six means last the two samples will overlap. So for example, first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample. Then again, uh, again on the, these two samples, another two samples will come. So there is an overlapping of samples will appear. So another case, the third case where it is shown here, you can see n is equal to three, l is equal to three again. One, two, three, again, again the sample C is repeating. So only you, you need to understand here are small mistakes made by student that you can do by your own. The very simple task, this one, capital N, the number of samples of a of should be greater than the L here. So L represents the periodic number and N is the number of samples. If a, a periodicity number is less than the, the length of the sample, then always no aliasing. If it is, uh, all, if it is the length of the sample is less than the periodic signal means so, uh, the samples will overlap and that will lead to uh, uh, aliasing.
So now after this one, let us uh, go into the detail part for the construction of the DFT and the IDFT. Just, just a minute. Just one few a second. So here, I hope you can hear, in the construction part, EFT is the one, discrete Fourier transform is taking place. So what is the Fourier transform? See, any transform means you're converting one signal to another signal. Always remember, from time domain to frequency domain, a Fourier transform is the tool which is carried out. So here, we are applying not Fourier transform, we are applying discrete Fourier transform. Discrete Fourier transform because the input x of n is discrete in nature. It is not continuous. If it is continuous in time, in place of x of n, if it is x of t, then we would have taken a Fourier transform, which would have converted x of t into x of omega or x of f. But it is not going to happen here because the input signal which is there is discrete in time. Therefore, discrete Fourier transform is the application we are applying. So after applying that, we will get capital X of K, where K is a, a, X is a capital, and K can also be a capital one. So in the reconstruction process, what is happening in the reconstruction process? Again, a mistake here. Again, a mistake here. Please uh, rectify this mistake. X of K is the input, and X of N is the output, and we are applying discrete Fourier inverse discrete Fourier transform. When inverse discrete Fourier transform of this one, you can see the continuation of this one. Uh, for example, I can draw here like this. I'm drawing here. So here, when you are taking IDFT of this one. So for example, the line I have drawn, X of K is the input. And if you're applying, if you're taking IDFT of this one, the IDFT of this one will give you the X of N. That is called reconstruction process. Now, let us take the signal uh, which is represented. Let us take the periodic signal into consideration, xp of n. So remember, xp of n is nothing but x of n. Both are same. x of n is equal to xp of n. Both are same. That, that we are going to uh, discuss later. So we have taken x, x of n in place of xp of n. k is varying from. Now, summation is we are using k is varying from 0 to n minus 1. Now, we have taken t of k e raised to minus j 2 pi k m by n. So where n is varying from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So what is C of k? C of k is a Fourier coefficient and it is a given by. See, again, Fourier coefficient, Fourier series, Fourier transform, all these are a parameters or a, uh, uh, are the conditions which we are using in the signal processing. So which signal we have taken? Please remember, we have taken a signal instead of x of n is equal to summation n is varying from 0 to n minus 1, x of n is to j 2 pi by n into k into k into uh, k. We have taken xp of n, periodic signal we have taken. Of taking a periodic signal in the summation, the varying parameter is k and it is varying from 0 to n minus 1, and c of k is taken. Now, what is c of k? C of k is a Fourier coefficient and it is given by c of k is equal to 1 by n. Summation small n is equal to 0 to n minus 1, xp of n e raised to minus j 2 by k into n by n. Now, how this has a k? You need uh, the knowledge of a four year series or a four year uh, series, then we can say that how we can write the, the, the c of k as this one. So, where n is again the number of samples and xp of n is a periodic signal, and k and n are integers representing uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1. So in the next line, in the construction process, we have to substitute the C of K value into back into equation number one. So our intention is to our intention is to obtain discrete Fourier transform. So I will repeat the whole equation of this page once again. But uh, let us study. So let us substitute this C of K back into equation number one. So LHS remains uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the LHS again. Uh, before substituting that, we have recalled one more equation. 
The read portion is the previous equation. The previous equation here. This equation, which, 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 which we have called it as a DFT equation. Here, this equation, equation number seven. So equation number seven was x of the two pi by n into k summation n is equal to zero to n minus one x p of n is to minus j two pi by n into k into n. So what is x p of n? It is written in the next. What is x p of n? It is written here. Here and it is x p of n is a periodic signal. Means this periodic signal means it has a uh, is sequence in it. So this x p of n is written like this, where summation where where c of k is a coefficient because of the k here, a function k is varying from zero to n minus one, and e raised to j two pi by k into n, k small n by capital. Now here e of k is a Fourier coefficient, and Fourier coefficient equation is represented one by n summation n is equal to zero to n minus one x p of n. See, always remember I have seen students particularly making mistake while uh, taking the range for the summation. The range of the summation function for it particularly. It depends on the parameter which we are used here. So here the signal is xp of n is a function of small n. Because of small n, the summation is varying from n is equal to zero to n minus one. I repeat, small n because of that n is varying from zero to n minus one. In the above equation, equation number one, c of k is a k here because of the k is a function of this signal. So k is varying from zero to n minus one. So this one you should remember. Else you will make a mistake. In place of n, you will write k. In place of k, you will write n. So we have written this uh, this C of k equation, in, which is a definition of a Fourier coefficient of any signal. Any signal so here, any signal is x p of n is equation number two. So after writing a one and a two, we are recalling the previous equation. I'm repeating. After writing equation one, which is x p of n, which is a time domain signal, and equation number two is a Fourier Coefficient of c of k. We are recalling the previous equation. The previous equation it is already shown in the slide here. This is the previous equation. This is the equation number seven. Is the previous equation. Equation seven is the previous equation. Now, when we recall the equation number seven, which is the previous equation here, we know that which is written again here as it is, and we call this as equation number three. Now, in equation number three, what has to be written? We have to write the x. Equation or expression of x p of n. Now, what we have done in this on this uh, page on this page, we have obtained the detailed expression for the x p of n, which was not known in equation number seven. In equation number seven, we just mentioned x p of n is a graphical, or just mentioned as a periodic signal, and it's a graphical analysis of aliasing and. Uh, No, uh, no aliasing is analyzed. Aliasing will not take place when the length of the sequence n is greater than the period of a sample l, where capital n is the length of the signal and small l, uh, capital l is the period of a signal. Period of a signal should be always less than the length of the signal. Then no aliasing will takes place. So in the periodic signal, x p of n is a periodic signal which continuously appear. For example, if period is eight, the eight eight samples will appear continuously, etc. So here. We have evaluated in this on this on on this page x p of n and c of k, which we have to write back into equation number seven to uh, to construct the signal. Now, in, uh, we recalled that equation number three it is represented, but it is actually equation number seven previously. So capital here a b c has to be written. The students has made small a small b so that we can substitute uh, uh, a into equation seven etc. So I uh, not uh, went through this one properly. So here. Capital x of two pi by n into k is equal to summation n is equal to zero n minus one. X p of n e raised to minus j two pi k n by n is written. Here we have to write the value of x p of n. So equation two become now here uh, here uh, after writing this one again we are not directly substituting. We are again using equation number two here. In equation number two, we are writing again equation number two. We are we are, we have to substitute x p of n. Then we have to do it like that. So equation number two is c of k one by n x of two pi by n into k is one. Now here it is done directly. I'll explain it again. So here 
what is xp of n it is not written we have to write the equation of the xp of n uh, here xp of n uh, the value of xp of n is summation all these things we have to write and we have to simplify so after that after simplification of this one we can see that how the relationship can be established between uh, this and this equation number 3 ko idhan se dekho so equation 2 and equation 3 ko you have to see it very carefully so equation 2 is a fourier coefficient c of k is equal to 1 by n summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xp of n e raised to minus z 2 by k into n and equation and we we recalled equation from equation number 7 is x of 2 pi k by n into k and summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xp of n e raised to minus z 2 by k n by n so here when this and this equation 2 and equation number 3 are compared we can write equation here the below equation which i am highlighting here so one step is skipped here we can substitute that one how we can do that one is that in equation number 2 you just apply 1 by n if you leaving 1 by n a remaining thing is x of capital x of this equation number 3 how equation number 2 i can write it again i can write it equation 2 again which is a skip here or you can write it again so for example equation number 2 becomes it is written here c of k as it is 1 by n as it is now this term summation term to exponential term represent equation number 3 so it is nothing but c of k is equal to 1 by n into equation number 3 i repeat lhs rhs part therefore what is then the uh, here what is here up, 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 uh, after the 1 by n we can write it as capital x of 2 pi by n into k so here from equation number 2 what we can write c of k is equal to 1 by n x of 2 pi by n into k is equation number 4 right any doubts students please discuss because it's a complete mathematical equations and i'm explaining from the notes the students notes if you have any doubt or confusion you can interact me at any time okay now let us substitute this value of uh, c of k back into equation number 1 so substituting the value of the p of k into back into the equation number 1 xp of 1 and xp of n is equal to 1 by n this this 1 by n so because the c of k we are taking and we are substituting the c of k back into equation number 1 so 1 by n will come so 1 by n summation it will come as it is k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 as it is now inside the bracket or inside the summation we will be having x of 2 pi by n into k and remaining term that is e raised to uh, e raised to j part that is e raised to plus j part e raised to j 2 pi k n by n will remain same thing so here remember while constructing we are going from n to k and reconstruction k to small n so i would like to repeat to all of you that the constructed signal is equation number 7 i repeat so the constructed signal is the equation number 7 and the reconstructed signal is equation number 5 because constructed signal represents x of capital x of k and the reconstructed signal represents xp of n so from these things we can define two important definition from the above theory that is called discrete fourier transform and inverse discrete fourier transform so discrete fourier transform is x of k is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi k n by n and inverse discrete fourier transform is a small x of n 1 by n summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k e raised to j 2 pi k into n by n now let us go to sampling theorem after explaining you what is a sampling how exactly the sampling has done in terms of the signal processing so in terms of equations uh, we have discussed now we have to go for the sampling theorem 
what is the sampling theorem so can anyone tell me what is sampling theorem so in your syllabus in the first the fourth one sampling introduction representation of continuous time signal spike samples the sampling theorem is there sampling theorem is there reconstruction of signal from the sample using different methods is there and aliasing also there the sampling theorem i would like to explain sampling theorem in the part now can anyone tell me the what is sampling theorem students sir i can uh, can you hear me sir yes sir you are audible yeah thank you now let us go for the sampling theorem so now this is very interesting as compared to the previous one where we have evaluated the discrete fourier transform and inverse discrete fourier transform that it is very difficult from for the students to analyze directly i don't know whether this part is there in your syllabus or not but as far as the sampling is concerned how the samples are analyzed how the discrete fourier transform and how inverse discrete fourier transforms are used for the construction and reconstruction of the signal flows in box now uh, we'll understand what is a uh, sampling theorem see this theorem is one of the most important theorems in your uh, electronics and telecommunication course is because based on this theorem only the all the digital communication is going on this is a fundamental principle so i would like to explain this fundamental principle with this graph see what is this graph is this is an analog signal right and from this analog signal we want to construct it into the periodic signal from the constructed discrete signal we want back to the analog signal so how it is possible because analog signal that is a continuous one which cannot be transmitted in digital communication sampling has to happen sampling means taking its samples then from the samples to analog sense analog signal reconstruct so previous uh, slides we have seen how to construct the signal mathematically and how to reconstruct the signal now we'll understand through the graph and again through the equations that how the signals uh, Uh, can be constructed and reconstructed through the theorems when taking a particular real time signal into consideration so any periodic signal any uh, sorry any continuous signal can be constructed into a sample and it can be reconstructed from its sample back into the continuous signal when the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice of the modulating frequency i repeat if this is a continuous signal it has its modulating frequency we call it as a message signal frequency let us consider the message signal frequency is 3 kilohertz if let us consider the message signal frequency is 3 kilohertz then this signal can be constructed and it can be reconstructed back when the sampling frequency means the frequency from which which the samples are taken the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to at least a double of the sample the frequency of the message signal at least a double means what we have 3 kilohertz means double means at least 6 kilohertz or more than the 6 kilohertz then only it is possible to construct and reconstruct what happens so for example if this condition is not satisfied less than 6 kilohertz let us consider 5.8 kilohertz or 5.5 kilohertz or 5 kilohertz what happens whether it is not possible to construct and reconstruct yes it is possible possible but at the receiver end your received signal will not match with the transmitted signal in order to match both the received and the transmitted signal if we have to uh, 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 we have to uh, uh, take care that the sampling frequency should be always greater than the twice of the modulating of frequency at least twice or more than that that is the concept so the same concept is being explained in this statement so a band limited signal having the highest frequency w means a frequency of the message signal is taken as a w hertz can be completely reconstructed from its samples if the samples are taken at the frequency fs greater than or equal to twice of the w if w is 3 kilohertz minimum sampling frequency which is required is 6 kilohertz and more than so now uh, one practical concept i would like to give you here which you will not hardly find it in the textbooks for example double of more than double fs is more than 2w means what for i can take in instead of uh, for example w is 3 kilohertz minimum sampling frequency required is 6 kilohertz and above it also works 6 then which one we have to take 
See, if you are increasing the sampling frequency, means number of samples will be increased. The number of samples will be increased means more will be the requirement of the bandwidth. So more will be the requirement of that bandwidth means the cost will increase. So, and most of the time the bandwidth has a restriction. So how to avoid, there is called a engineering Nyquist criteria. So FS is equal to greater than or equal to 2W is called Nyquist criteria. The name of the scientist is Nyquist. Who has coined, who has given this formula for the successful transmission of a signal from one point to another point when digital communication is used, Nyquist. And as for his criteria, sampling frequency should be greater than 2W, always not equal. For example, theoretically in the simulation in the MATLAB, when you're taking equal to, you will get graph. But in the practical scenario, because of the fading, because of a loss of attenuation of a signal, we cannot take exactly equal. We should take always above the, uh, the twice of the bandwidth of the message signal. Above means how much, whether the... Uh, uh, means three kilohertz, means seven kilohertz, eight kilohertz, nine kilohertz, then how much? If you're randomly for taking the more the in, increasing the sampling frequency, means samples will unnecessarily in, increase and the bandwidth will increase uh, uh, linear, uh, respectively. So to avoid that, engineering Nyquist criteria has to be used. What we, we do in the practical research is we, have, we are taking engineering Nyquist criteria. What is that? FS is equal to 2.25 FW. That is the perfect one. I repeat, FS is equal to 2.5 or 2.25 of W. Both are no problem. It, usually we take 2.5. So FS is equal to 2.5 W is the engineering Nyquist criteria. So this engineering Nyquist criteria is not mentioned in any textbook because it is a real time concept. In real time, we cannot take as per our wish. The double of the two, uh, double of the uh, more than double of the uh, message frequency means we cannot take uh, any 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 number. There is a So sorry for the interruption. So here, uh, I'm telling you the Nyquist engineering criteria. The Nyquist engineering criteria should be FS is equal to 2.5 of W. So now let us proceed for the understanding of the sampling theorem. See, let us consider G of T is a time domain signal, which is there. And SWT is a train of impulse signal, which we are applying here. Let's try to understand this concept. G of T is the continuous analog signal and SDL of T is the train of impulse. When multiplied together, continuous into discrete, it will be discrete, like one, one into zero, zero, like one, 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 multiplied with one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, answer will be one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I repeat, one, 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 multiplied with one, zero, one, zero, answer will be one, zero, one, zero from the end operation. Similarly, Continuous analog signal with the discrete nature here, on of on of pulse, a train of on of pulse, mul multiplied together, it will give a discrete signal like this. So this graphical representation of a signal is shown in the mathematical form here. So this is a multiplier where G of T is a continuous signal and S del of T is a train of impulse. When it is given, we will get an output signal called sampled signal. The sampled signal is G del of T, which is equal to the input signal G of T into train of impulses, S del of T. Now here, so equation number one here, you can see in equation number one, G del of T is the sampled signal, which is a multiplication of two signals. G of T is analog signal, this one. S del of T is a train of impulse. When we, the two things are multiplied, we will get the second equation. What is the second equation? No, no, this is the first equation. In the first equation, 
we have to write separately how the train of impulses are train of impulses are represented this train of impulses are represented s del of t is equal to summation see how this can be written this analyze these are the discrete signals means we have to use summation and let us consider small n is a one which we are taking for as a function time function it is varying from minus infinity here and it is going to plus infinity and you can see the samples are having time shifted nature and this is not a sample this is a impulse so practically impulse is not existing for for the analysis of the sampling term impulses are taken later impulses can be replaced by samples which in the concept called flat top sampling the practical approach for the sampling theorem is a flat top where impulses can be represented by samples but these are not the samples so theoretically first we have to understand the sampling theorem through this impulse only so these time shifted impulses will appear from 0 ps to s etc from the time shifting of uh, del of t minus n into ps so how this can be written summation n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity impulses del so bracket second t is here t minus n into ps suppose n is equal to 0 means del of t always del of t is the sample which is appearing at the zeroth position suppose n is equal to 1 t minus n t minus ts first next second sample then for example next one 2ts at the 2ps 3ts 4ts and and so on then you are varying n from 0 to 1 2 3 4 etc so here we are almost at the constructed side signal now this time shifted signal has to be written here so the output signal g del of t is equal to g of t summation n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity del of t minus n into t s here in place of s del of t i am repeating in the previous equation you can see here the previous equation s del of t s del of t l s del of t is represented in equation number 2 so equation number 2 is replaced with it is substituted in equation number 1 I repeat, equation two is substituted in equation number one. So here, equation number one becomes g del of t is equal to g of t summation n is equal to minus n into plus n into del of t minus n into t s. Right. Now we have to use this time shifting property or sorry, impulse shifting property. From the shifting property, you can see that g of t del of t minus n into t s is equal to g of n into t s. This is time function will be replaced by n into t s, n into t s. Then del of t minus n into t s same. So in the shifting property here, g of t multiplied with del of t minus n into t s, signal will become discrete. I will explain with this concept. Continuous signal, discrete signal, discrete signal. One 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 zero one zero. Answer is one zero one zero. Here, this continuous signal multiplication to discrete signal. This signal is continuous. This will become discrete, and this one as it is. This is the property. And as for this property, we have to write in this this first equation of this page, where we need to make a little arrangement. We have to take the summation outside. The summation is taken outside in equation number three. When g of t multiplied by del of t minus n into t s. We will get the continuous g of t by discrete g of g of n into t s, then del of t minus n into t s. That is equation. Now this is time domain analysis of the sampling curve. Now let us go for the frequency domain analysis. For the frequency domain analysis, here I will go back to the equation number one. Equation number one is a time domain signal. It is represented here. T should be replaced by f. And small g should be replaced by capital T. Here, time domain. How it was time domain? It is written in bracket. In time domain, equation one was g del of t is equal to input signal or message signal g of t train of impulse g del of t. If you are applying Fourier transform to this one, how to convert time domain signal to frequency domain? I explained a few minutes back. That the time domain signal to frequency domain means a Fourier transform. Here, signal is not discrete. Signal is analog continuous. Therefore, only Fourier transform. But however, in the previous one, the signal was discrete. We have taken 
discrete fourier transform now this uh, fourier transform i'm applying the fourier transform for the equation number 1 we will get here you can see capital g means uh, fourier transform means it should be capital g del of p will be replaced by small f then second term g of t here it is now g of f here multiplication will become convolution remember multiplication of two signals is equal in time domain is equal to convolution of those signals in the frequency domain and the vice versa it's a concept of signal processing and this is one of the theories uh, one of the properties you will understand soon when we will study the details of signal processing so here time domain signals are multiplying frequency domain is the convolution so here yes del of p is yes del of f now from this equation again we have to write the train of impulse in frequency domain so yes del of f is a train of impulse in frequency domain is written as it is and only the difference is t is replaced by f is replaced by so t is replaced by f so fs is the extra term which represent the sampling because the sampling has to take place here during the sampling theorem so fs is a sampling summation n is equal to minus infinity plus infinity del of it was earlier you can see it was t f n into t s n into f now we need to substitute equation 5 into equation number 4 when you substitute equation 5 into equation number 4 we will get again equation number 4 can be written as uh, that is the output of the uh, sampler in frequency domain that is g del of f is equal to g of f this g of f as it is convolution this term fs summation del of f minus n into fs now from the convolution property of impulse function again a property we have we call here now what is that property the property is that once again this one g of f convolution del of f minus n into fs yields g of f minus n into fs right so it is just like g of f into 1 is equal to g of f and repeating g of f into 1 is equal to g of f like that here impulse f minus n into fs all when it is consider the impulse is taken just like a uh, uh, con what value constant value because there is constantly that is appearing but however it is shifting n into fs has to be taken so therefore here del here g in place of del and g it is g and f minus n into fs so as per the convolution property of the impulse function that you need to understand in signal processing concepts g of f convolution del of f minus n into fs it is g of f minus n into fs now substitute let us arrange this one and substitute back this uh, property therefore the output signal g del of f is equal to this fs as it is summation as it is the convolution of g of f the first term and the last term is g of f minus n into f so this is the last equation of the uh, sampling in frequency domain so here if you have any questions i am going to another 5 six minutes for interaction if you wish to discuss anything please feel free for the discussion sir back to you uh okay sir guys if anybody has any doubt related to that so ask question whatever the point we have they have covered sir so please ask the question am i audible to all guys yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Okay, if you have any doubt you can ask okay uh just a minute sir if they are any query so they can and uh, one thing related to that now i am going to share one uh link in a chat box so this uh fill that link okay and so if anybody has any doubt you can ask me satnapa cr anyone has any doubt nikhil
no sir no doubt okay so uh, don't leave the meeting just a minute sir uh, two minutes huh, sir okay uh, rahul sir is there yes sir yes sir uh, okay sir rahul sir over to you okay okay uh, no i'm going to do a lot of thanks uh, good evening everyone uh, it has been such a wonderful part of this wonderful thing गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन it has been such an honor to part of this wonderful session on the behalf of the ntc department sir shivani pandalpur uh, i would like to extend my uh, heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest dr uh, virendra dr virendra dakul ji sir uh, to our uh, esteemed guest today's guest dr p virendra dakul ji and uh, honorable principal dr dp ronge sir to given permission to arrange this session and i uh, very much very much thankful to head of the department dr vijay kale sir uh, then uh, subject coordinator mr a kadam sir and at the last but not the least uh, all faculty in the joint uh, year and all the students participated over here thank you thank you so much okay uh, thank you sir virendra sir uh, thank you so much thank you sir thank you very much sir. okay if the any uh, doubt is there then i will uh, share with you okay at the end okay, okay. thank you very much so thank you sir thank you so much uh, student dear student uh, i have shared one link in a chat box so everyone uh, you you should submit their link on the uh, particular time right okay so thank you thank you so much sir once again thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you Okay, sir, you you can leave now. Uh, guys, uh, don't leave the meeting. Uh, we have one important uh, notice for you. Don't leave the meeting just for a minute. Okay, I have shared one link in a chat box. so everyone fill that link based on that uh, response we are going to consider the attendance okay so if if anybody has any doubt related to that point you can put the message to me i will share that uh, question to the sir and they are uh, give the answer afterwards so i will forward to you okay if anybody has any doubt yes sir there is no link on chat box just i have put now check no. once again ha ah, yes sir how is it sir huh? okay okay so you can leave now thank you thank you so much uh, as per the schedule whatever the next schedule is there follow that schedule okay thank you